Nous commençons avec la réalisatrice de Blowy Strat Eleven, Nienke Deutz. Good morning. Yeah, we'll do it in English. Nice. Lovely. Would you would you prefer something else? Uh, Another no. language? Well, no. No, English is good for me. English is good. Okay. Nyanke, when we first watched your film, mm -hmm. during the selection process, it was a shock for us. A first professional professional film by an unknown filmmaker with such a personal approach, a subtle point of view, and a real mastering of different techniques. So tell us about you. What was your background, your training? Yeah. Well, um, I first studied uh, fine arts at uh, art school. Well, I'm from Holland, so I, I started at the uh, art school in the south of Holland, in Maastricht. I studied film and uh, switched to fine arts, so I did mostly... Um, I worked with video a lot, uh, but it was more like uh, site-specific installations or um, uh, performances. And after that, I... I didn't really know what to do with it, and I thought like I it would be nice to be um, to be more specific uh, with what I do. So then I decided to do a master, and since I was sometimes uh, building small sets and not really animating, but like I moved lamps or I poured water over it, or whatever, like kind of a basic animation, and then I thought maybe I should do something in animation film. So then I started uh, a master at the uh, KASK, the uh, art school in Ghent, in Belgium. And I did, uh, yeah, I did uh, my master's there. In and, animation? Uh, in animation film, yes. Yeah, so uh, I'm always interested in experiment, in trying to find uh, something that I don't know yet when I start on a project in in uh, in technique and also content-wise, like uh, with the subject that I'm thinking, like, okay, I'm curious about this subject. And in this uh, in this case, it was uh, uh, female friendship mm -hmm. and uh, puberty and how this can be actually a really nice and sweet thing, but also quite dark. Um, so I wanted to research that. And then there were some questions in animation that I wanted to to find answers to, and that was the starting point. <laughs> Blue Strat 11 seems to be very personal, so is it inspired on by events that happen in your own personal life? Or? Well, no, it's not something that I, uh, like, an event, events that happened in my life, but for me, um, well, I really wanted to make a film about a relationship, like a small, a small story about a relationship between two people before my films were more like uh, bigger ideas or more like figuring out you know, other stuff and um, then I for me like I have two best friends basically that I really know since I'm two years old and we kind of grew up in the same neighborhood so it's inspired by this kind of friendship but it's like the events, for me it was more I wanted to to make a portrait of the intensity of a friendship in this age. And, and but then I thought, okay, so I had all these scenes, which is like images that portray this. Um, but then I thought, okay, I, I, if I just have these scenes, I'm not sure if I can capture an audience for nine minutes. So then I, then I um, made a story, <laughs> <laughs> like a storyline, because I think, uh, for me, it's really the, the the most significant moments in the film. Are it's for me, it's not necessarily the story, but you need the story for the the specific moments to touch you. I think I don't know. That was my hope, at least. <laughs> Tell us about your conceptual approach, because the the set, the house, mm -hmm. is very important, and you turn around it, yeah. and so. Uh, looks that it comes from your visual art uh, background yeah. but tell us about your your will when you uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so, uh, how did this come about? I think for me, the idea of a friendship being a safe space was was uh, an important idea. And if you're that young, there's like nothing in the world that's really, really important except your friends and your house and your your world is also not that big you know it's like your house and your backyard or whatever so for me i had this idea of that the house is the only place the house is basically the the physical place where the friendship exists and outside of the house there's nothing so i really wanted this to be a universe it's almost like a castle and when they're spitting outside for me outside of the window. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, in the Middle Ages, you know, they throw hot uh, stuff over the, over the wall uh -huh. <laughs> to, uh, for intruders to keep them out. And this is really, you know, they are protecting their zone. And um, for me, I wanted to, to have the house so important because it's, it's, it's the place where their friendship exists. And at the moment, their friendship falls apart. The, the place is gone, in a way, yeah. In the credits, in the end credits of the mm -hmm. film, I noticed that there was at least two uh, familiar names for us uh, mm -hmm. in Annecy, Jasmine Elson ah, yeah. and Digna van der Poot. Yes. And so they had films here. Uh, you seem to have a very little experience before this film yeah. in animation. So uh, how... Did you deal with two girls that are also filmmakers in your yeah. in your crew? It was so lovely to have them. Really, yeah. it was amazing because they are because they are film ex and that's why I really wanted them. Well, actually, Digna I didn't know before, and Yasmin did an internship with me, so I knew her that way. But it's great to have people who know what it is to make a film and not just be animators, because we could really discuss. Because I f for me it was yeah it was really new and it was an experiment and I was like okay I want to try it let's see where it goes yeah. and my producer was so kind to be like okay yeah we're gonna do it it's great but so it was great and important to have people who know this process and who could help me and I really felt because I started the animation with Tichna Tichna van der Put and she gave me so much confidence because she really believed in the project and she. I don't know, she just said like, for, she gave me really the feeling like, okay, it's okay that you don't know everything yet. We can learn from each other. And so it really, for me, it was an amazing experience work, working with a team and have a team behind me that's like, you know, we're doing this together mm. to do, yeah. <laughs> Questions from the audience? Michael. Beautiful, beautiful film. Um, <laughs> clearly, showing the materials is important to you. Does that come from your fine arts and installation background, or was that part of the the high concept of this particular film? Well, yeah. Well, it was two things actually. It it also came from the research that I did on these teenage girls, and I really wanted to use materials that are you know, like very familiar uh, bricolage, <laughs> right, mm -hmm. uh, materials. So just things you have in a house, glitter, plastic, cardboard, paint. So this was one thing. But also, what I, like, I really love animation and how like you make a few drawings or you, you, you make a few pictures and it moves and this is, it really amazes me. Like every time I do something small, I can be like, ah, yeah, this is great, I love it. And, um, I really wanted that to be apparent in the film. And for me, uh, showing the material and also sometimes changing, like sometimes if they have clothes on, it's, it's uh, paint, and then if they take it off, it's, it's uh, a fabric. I think that makes you, or at least I hope, it makes you conscious of the material and it makes you appreciate the fact that it's animation. Uh, it, it makes you aware of the construction of the whole, uh, of the animation and that was a really important thing for me to realize because sometimes things are done so nicely so nicely that you don't almost see it and i really wanted to try to show you know to show some roughness and to sometimes leave a pin in the cardboard and yeah so uh, 
Uh, hello. Um, my question is, how did you proceed for the making of the uh, outline of characters? Because we, we, it seems that it's uh, plastic uh, slides, uh, cut it. So you you have to cut different uh, shape uh, each for each frame. You have to cut different. Uh yeah. Well, in the test, I did it like this. First, I was drawing really on plastic with a uh, with a pen, and then I uh, drew in a computer and printed it. And then the first ones, I cut them all by hand. And there was like the the test that I did uh, maybe ten seconds, and then I found like, ouch! It's really really intense, super sore. So then we found uh, a way to export all the frames and we put them all on really uh, big sheets to print them and we made a, a vector outline uh, in Illustrator and we could send it to, uh, to a print shop that could uh, cut it with uh, a knife. So that was good. It made the, like, uh, first I was like, no, I want to do everything by, you know, like very puristic, but then I thought, <laughs> okay, it's already such an intense process. It's good to have a little shortcut, so yeah. It adds uh, something on, uh, on the screen to, to get uh, transparency through the characters, yeah. uh, according to you, yes. Oh, yeah. Would you add something? No, <laughs> was it a question? Or? What is the purpose to have transparency? What is the purpose to have transparency? Uh, uh, well, I wanted to do um, <laughs> it. When I did the, the visual research for the film, I was making a lot of illustrations of uh, the girls, and I just found I couldn't get the right, you know, the fragileness of this teenage body and like the shapes. I couldn't find this in uh, in puppets. I just couldn't express it. And since I really love building sets, and I really wanted this, and then I don't know, I had a revelation, and I just tried this idea. First, I even had this idea to draw, you know, with this 3D pens. <laughs> I thought, oh, maybe I can do black lines with a 3D pen in plastic. And well, then I thought, like, okay, that's not going to work. So this is how it came out, like, to, yeah, to have, uh, yeah, it just came from the research, I guess. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. I was wondering, uh, Sometimes, um, anyway, great movie, I love it. Um, sometimes the shadow of the characters were like uh, made of light instead of, uh, instead of um, shadow. And I was wondering, how did you make that? I mean, you put the light. Yes, well, I was really lucky to work with a great DOP and Lightman who was standing there, Stevie. And um, I discussed it with him, how we, can we make this technique as visual as possible? And it's just really presence you get when working with this material because it reflects. It was also really hard because you have to get your, you know, your stuff really straight because basically if, if the, the plastic is a little bit different, then the shadow moves and the light moves. But this is really just a reflection. It's, it's a reflection. Uh, for the night scene, I wanted to have a backlight on the character to have it more like night, yeah, night, and then, yeah, it's just things that happen, which is great. There, there was so much to, um, to, uh, uh, to gain and to discover in this technique while we were making the process, which, which made it, which kept, kept it really interesting to work on. Thank you very much, Nienke. <laughs> Thank you.